Suboptimal Podcast. Check out our Suboptimal content at suboptimal.co. Hey guys, welcome to episode 8 of the Nightcast. I got Red Nolas back and I got Mr. Giggles. We're going to be talking about like, get off my freaking lawn. Video games of old were much more difficult, much more fun in some aspects because of the difficulty. And you don't have to worry about like auto saves or cloud saves or anything. You just have to leave your console on all day and all night. So that way you can keep playing. Or when your parents go, no, it goes off. You lose everything. And then you start from the very beginning. So guys, I just want to say hi and thank you. Giggles. How are you doing, Maddie? I'm doing great. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you guys, you're obviously doing better than Red because poor Red is still sick and is probably coughing up a storm because I see he keeps muting himself in Discord. I, I'm going to mute habitually <laughs> just in case <laughs> there's like some coughing going on or, you know. So, I know we talked a little bit about, like, what to say here, and it, we kind of came up with this idea because I know it's both mine and Mr. Giggle's uh, birthdays coming up right after this podcast comes out, and so we kind of wanted to just, like, remember, of like, we're getting older and what video games were like in days of old, and I think that it's a little bit, like, not, you know, we're old man, get off my lawn, and I'm wearing, of course, my Mario shirt today, so... I just want to say, back when I started playing video games, I started on uh, PC back in about 1988, 1986. Um, and it was a much different time than PC gaming now because it was in DOS. <laughs> you had to know <laughs> command line to get to where your directory was, and then you had to know the command line argument to execute your thing, and I had to learn that as a child. And so double-clicking on these icons on your desktop and having cloud saves and Steam downloads, that, that didn't exist. You had demo floppy drives five and a quarter floppy drives that we'd put into our pc and you'd swap the disc depending upon you want game or data save and it was it was a much different time i think and i just feel like like sim city like the original sim city and um commander keen uh the old side scroller duke nukem were like the stuff i kind of grew up on and then as I got older, like when we got to like, you know, 89, 90, 92, we got an NES, we had a Super Nintendo and we started, I started a lot more console gaming at that point. But like originally for me, it was, you know, the Packard Bell 286 with DOS and then Windows 3.1. And then we had a um, Commodore 64 and a Commodore 128 and I had a TRS-80. So those are like, that's how I grew up playing games. And so my, my, my experience, I guess, with video games is much different than probably your guys's. Because you guys are a little younger than me, but not much. And you guys grew up with consoles, right? I was uh, born in 95. So I am the uh, the ass end of the younger millennials. <laughs> and I was born in 96, a year after Red. Yeah, and I, I'm from 84. So I, I'm, I'm in the gray hair millennial area. So I'm, I'm, I'm like 1980 or 82, depending upon who says a millennial is a millennial is like, that's the beginning of it. So I'm, I, I consider myself, my friend coined the term gray hair millennial. And I, I feel like I am that because I literally have a few gray hairs, but most of it's just gone. <laughs> Except for your glorious beard. Yeah. It's the hair migration. Like I go from high school to now and it's just everything migrated from the top to the bottom. <laughs> So, uh, no. Giggles, how did you start, like, gaming? Like, what what do you remember, like? I originally like... started at a very young age of four playing with my dad on his original NES. Mm-hmm. And uh, I started out, uh, I think the first picture I, I went through yesterday, through a photo album. Yes, people still have those, by the way. Uh, the, I went this through This magic yesterday. thing that's, like, in print in a book, and there's photos in it. Yes. It's a very rare thing to find nowadays. <laughs> think, think of it as like Flickr or Facebook, but with without just faces in a book. Yeah. <laughs> but um, <laughs> uh, I date myself already. This is great. Uh, I no the picture I found the oldest one was when I was about four years old. And I'm sitting there in my dad's lap, trying to figure out the buttons on how to play Ghosts and Goblins. And the look on my face was nothing but pure rage. What I, what I love about that is, like, when you think about the NES, you only had really six buttons, right? You had the D-pad, which was four different directional buttons, and you had A and B, and that's it. Start and select exactly. in the middle. You didn't really care about an inside the video game. Like, your dad would start it, 
and you just didn't care about those buttons at that point. Exactly. Yeah. No, my, no. I watched my daughter, like, just get so frustrated by, like, a PlayStation 4 controller. Mm-hmm. I could only imagine, like, trying to put in front of her something older. Like, I put in front of her a Super Nintendo controller because we got one of those Super Nintendo minis. And mm-hmm. she doesn't, like, she doesn't get it. Like, she just takes her thumb and she puts it in the middle of all four of the, you know, A, B, X, Y. And she just just rolls it around to hit all the buttons. Like, she does great in Street Fighter, but everything else she just gets frustrated with. Because <laughs> that's what you do with Street Fighter. I mean, who, who am I kidding? As a kid? That's what you do. You button smash. You don't know what the controls are. Exactly. Uh, but no, my my experience with video games has been mainly side scrollers as a child. Once I hit teenage years, I kind of got big into fighters like Soul Calibur, where I was able to get into the top 100 in America. Damn. And after that, it just and then after many years of playing Soul Calibur. Tekken games, fighting games, I eventually moved on to looter shooters. Mm -hmm. And that's basically where my experience of gaming has been for the past, shoot, almost 23 years now. (laughs) And Red, how about you? Like, what was your origins? What's your origin story of video gaming? So I started (laughs) with a gifted Nintendo 64. Um, so it was given to my grandpa by his secretary because she's like, I don't have time for this and I don't want to have the patience to figure it out. Maybe your grandson will like it. And it came with one game. It came with Super Mario 64 and that's it. That's a legit game. Mario 64 is great. I loved it. It was fantastic. Innovative as all hell. Oh my God. Yeah. And, uh, I remember she came to visit one time and asked, oh, yeah, how are you doing in that game? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I saved the princess. And she responded with, what princess? So she obviously didn't get very far. <laughs> Does not understand the concept of Mario. Does did not get very far. <laughs> the point of the game is to save the princess. Um, but, but she's always in another castle. So that's where yeah. I started. Um and I feel like I was pretty spoiled that that's a game I started on because it's a really good game. Oh, that's an amazing oh, yeah, game to start on. I love that. It's a really good yeah, game to start Red, on. Red got so, to start on 64. <laughs> I'm over here starting on one of the hardest NES games built. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I skipped NES and Classic and all that stuff because it's just... I didn't have access to it. If I had a Nintendo mm-hmm. 64 until... Uh, did, did you ever roll back, like, now as an adult? Have you ever rolled back and tried, like, NES or Super Nintendo um, games? I've played a few anything? at, like, a friend's house, but mm-hmm. I haven't gone out of my way to, like, play any of the old ones. Okay. Um, One of the things I've done in the last few years is at one point I picked up a uh, Atari 2600, and I tried it out. And honestly, past the things that I played in the arcade cabinets, like combat, you know, missile command, things like that, I was like, the arcade versions are just more fun. They have better controls because, like, Missile Command on a joystick for the Atari versus with the rollerball in the arcade. There's just, for me, that rollerball like makes that game. That that's the control that the game was designed for. And so when you when you translate it to a console, I wasn't I wasn't impressed by the controls. But of course, this is like you know at the time I was doing this, this was like 25 year old me. So about 10 years ago when I did this and. He he was not impressed by that type of control adjustment. He was like, no, at that time, get off my lawn. I want my old rollerball back. <laughs> so I, uh, I guess I've been, a, I've been a cranky curmudgeon about video games like my entire life, even though I probably should never have been. Let's see. Yeah, now, now that I got gray hair, now I can be that, right? I got my coffee. Yeah. And I just sit here and say, get off my lawn. <laughs> oh, he's not the only one. I'm very excited. My, ne- my next batch of Kings Coast comes in today. Oh, nice. Yeah, I got the Honduran this morning, and it's tasty. Ooh, I'm going to have to try that. See, I ended up going with the classic Colombian black roast. Uh, If you want a good dark... It, side note, we're all coffee people. I mean, me, Red, Giggles, we, we, we love coffee. We are we addicted. Support, we support a company <laughs> called King's Coast with our purchases of coffee because they ship it to you for free if, domestically in the U.S. if you subscribe to them, and... Honestly, getting two bags from them is still cheaper than buying a coffee every day, or even three bags is buying a coffee every day. So if you're a coffee drinker, recommend. I can't get it. I don't get anything off of that. It's not an ad for me. It's an ad for them. But uh, go to mixer.com slash brofish for a code. 
Yeah, mixer.com slash brofish or mixer.com slash ladman yep. and uh, get their get their promo codes because you're supporting those guys and they're amazing people. They are. They are <laughs> ad for brofish, ad for ladman. <laughs> hashtag ad. <laughs> hashtag ad. Hashtag ad podcast. Ad ad. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so for me, one of the things that you said, Giggles, was like going to looter shooters. I'm a huge looter shooter fan. And yeah. I think that for if I look at like the classics and I look at older games, that looter shooter, like for me, I kind of like trace that back to like the Duke, nu- Duke Nukem side scroller. Because if you look at the old Duke Nukem side scroller from, from the DOS days, that you know, like episodes one through three of Duke Nukem one, yeah, you are, I, I mean, it is a side scroller, but you're looking for card keys, you're looking for um, shield keys, you're looking for these different items to unlock areas so you can progress. So you're looking for loot like it wasn't guns and it wasn't like all these other things, but you could get like gun upgrades and jump upgrades, if I remember right. So you were looking for items that could help progression of the game and help you move forward. And so I think like that was the original looter shooter. And that's kind of like why I like looter shooters today is that I like games that have story, have good mechanics and have you searching for things and that's kind of like that's my mentality like what a looter shooter when you boil it down is yeah and then um but and like how drake was drake was saying on how with looter shooters and how i'm playing a ton of looter shooters now destiny uh borderlands all that anthem um, division I haven't played too much anthem just yet i'm just i'm just giving you examples I've... of looter shooters oh yeah <laughs> even oh, looters yeah. like diablo Oh, Diablo, Diablo three is still my main jam. I will, I have, I think I have over and out twenty thousand hours. Damn. In Diablo three, and I don't regret a single hour. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely have to say, I have way more hours in Diablo two than I have in any other game probably in life. Diablo two was like my jam, uh, like. Like during during yeah. like high school for me, that was that was my game through through most of high school. And I think Diablo came out in middle school for me and then Diablo two was like my high school era. And yes. during Diablo two, I would literally come home, do the minimum amount of homework to make my my mom happy. And then <laughs> Red talked about this on another podcast, so I'm I'm going to confirm with him that even in our day, Red, we we didn't do homework. So, what you said about your students today? I don't. I'm a teacher, and I didn't do my homework. I just went and played video games. So Red, Red talked about how he would run home like his friends would, and they'd all go hop on Xbox and play Halo. And like for me, I would run home and hop on Battle.net so I could play Diablo because I was going to grind for the Hydra bow because I was an Amazon main. Like I mained Amazon. I didn't care about any other class. I did nothing else. All I did was Amazon and I farmed the shit out of the cow level. Like I could have probably, you know, rolled my life, my boiled my life down to waking up in the morning, running to school because I was late because I slept, stayed up way too late, getting to school, <laughs> suffering through the day. Maybe eating lunch at school because I was dirt ass poor, getting home, having something to eat as I ran to my computer to turn on next generation on the TV because Spike TV always had next generation on when I got out of school and then turning on Battle.net and Diablo and then watching Star Trek on TV while I played Diablo. And that was it. That was my like high school life. Like I didn't go out. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't do anything. High school life. For me, I actually never went out either. Uh, I was in high school. I was the nerd who always had a, his nose in a book, and wore way too much black. <laughs> I I I didn't care about clothes. Like I, I'm pretty sure the pants I'm wearing today are the same ones I wore in high school. They're uh, they're like one of my last <laughs> old navy cargo pants that I still have. I have like two pairs left, and this is this is the brown one. I'm pretty sure I this brown one I got like my junior year of high school, and I'm still wearing it. <laughs> But no, uh, I remember quite distinctly my senior year of high school. I didn't do anything for exam wise or anything like that. I was skating by the bare minimum because I would go home every day and turn on turn on the Super NES, which I still have. I ended up finding it and it still works. Oh, that's which I'm amazing. Very happy about my uh, my wife's parents found their Super NES and they gave it to uh, uh, my wife's little sister. 
and her husband's mm-hmm. a huge like retro gamer. Like that's all he mm-hmm. does. Like w- he's a musician, and then when he's at home, he just plays old games. And so he just relaxes and plays old games to get his mind off of 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 gigs and having to travel for work. And it's exactly. it's so I I I always BS with him about Super Nintendo games. It's so great. I love it. Yeah, but uh, no, like, and I remember turning it on and just playing hours of Castlevania. Nice. Okay, so Red, you're a Castlevania fan, aren't you? Or maybe you confused. I- uh anime yes games i've only played one okay i just know that during um during my watch of you playing through smash brothers ultimate you were always having like a castlevania guy so i thought you were just a huge a a huge fan i just didn't understand why i didn't ask um i enjoy them and like reading about that stuff because i'm a lit nerd so bram stoker is like you know quintessential literary stuff (laughs) so Therefore, I have to care about Dracula and stuff, but I've only played <laughs> Castlevania 2. Okay. Uh, as far as Castlevania games goes, and then... See, and for me, and I, 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 I'm going to, you know, put probably people off, too, because I'm in your book, Red. I've only played one. I played Simon's Quest on the NES, and that's it. <laughs> I haven't played anything else. Um, it wasn't, like... See- not because it's not my game style. It's just because as a kid, I think I thought it was too difficult for me to get through because you couldn't save and it was really long and you had to figure out where the invisible blocks were and stuff. And I just didn't take the time mm-hmm. to do that. I'd rather play an easier game, I guess, because it was like taking your mind off life for me. Right. So I think that's kind of what turned me off when I was a kid. Now I want to go back and play them because I've watched people like Captain Marvel playing them on his like, Sunday morning fun days, and he's playing these old games. I'm like, oh shit, I want to go play that now. See, my favorite game, and if you ever go back to him, always to to spend some time on, is Castlevania Four. Castlevania Four for me, and I think a lot of people who have enjoyed all the Castlevania games, mm-hmm. is one of the best cast is the best Castlevania game to ever be made. Okay. Why is that? It's like what, 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 what determined that for you? Determined it for me was it brought back a lot of the cool atmosphere of uh, the original Castlevania. Okay. Along with a lot, along with a lot of the buttons weren't as challenging and weren't as wonky as they were in Simon's Quest. They okay. were easier, but the levels were just as difficult as the very first one. The levels were hard. They were challenging. And I felt accomplishment after beating each level. And then the music. That's the biggest thing for me as a DJ. That's what I do for a living. So you're, you're about having the flow of the music kind of like... Does it spring joy? <laughs> the music? Thank you, Condor. Thank you, okay. Condor. Just, just for clarification for all the listeners, I currently have the Castlevania 4 OST playing in the background of my house right now while I'm doing this. This is, that's this is... how much that ca- that's how much the OST has actually inspired me. Dude, when when you can yeah, enjoy is. something so much, you're like, I don't care if it's the game part, I don't care if it's the graphical design fl- design style, I don't care if it's the soundtrack. Like, I can take enjoyment even if they're separated. Like, they're exactly that, that's when you know that you were a fan of a particular genre or a particular game or a particular item. That when you can actually separate it into its different elements like visual style audio style play style and you like them all that you are a fan that's that's the ultimate definition of loving something right there hey exactly hey red do you have like a, a, oh sorry go ahead yeah and like what red was saying uh bram stoker yes literally he was a literal genius when it I, came to the written word and if i remember right Konami is the guys that made Castlevania. He, I bl- I want to say yes, but I'm afraid of getting backlashed, so uh, I'm gonna go with a maybe. <laughs> because I honestly up. can't remember currently, <laughs> and it's bugging me. <laughs> Konami, I just googled it. Yeah, okay, Konami did. Thank you, Red. I was right. I'm so, okay now. I, I I feel accomplished. Yeah, because <laughs> I believe there was a couple. I can't remember if it was. Kojima, like the Kojima from Konami that was on it, because there was a couple of Kojimas on the project, if I remember right. 
I believe the I believe the Kojima you're thinking of was on the first one. I'm not sure if he returned. Hideo for Kojima was around for at least one of them. Yeah, and that's that's the Kojima you're thinking of. Yeah, I yeah, just know the he, Kojima. Yeah, so he was definitely. I believe he was definitely like producer on them. I don't know if he was part of design or anything else, but he was definitely around for like producing them, if I remember right. At least one of them, yes. Do you think that Konami? If they didn't have Bram Stoker's work, could have pulled off a game like that? I want to... I don't... Honestly, I don't have an answer for that. Depends on the source material. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, like, if, like they, if they would have switched to, say, you know, from vampires to some other, you know, the mummy yeah. or Frankenstein or something like that, they could have taken... Stoker took the urban legend of vampire and kind of synthesized that into something that made sense in gothic, like, English literature. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and that gave us our stereotypical Dracula character. Yeah. So, I yeah. don't know. If we have a different source material there, it depends. Um, honestly, I'm not sure if they, they probably could have. But it would take a it would have taken them a lot longer than just being able to just look at Bram Stoker's Dracula to make the game. Sure. So Red, so for giggles, he's got you know Castlevania. What what's that game for you? What's that game that you can take apart into all its different elements and you 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 love all the different elements? Um, the one that I can like destroy and still like. Uh, we're either talking Oblivion or Fallout Three as like the RPGs that I just had mm-hmm. that I just sunk hours into because I'm a really late bloomer into online games. I didn't have uh, um, both of those are excellent games. I like both of those. So I didn't have Xbox Live until my like freshman year of high school, which is uh, like three I... years after all of my friends had it because they had it uh, like in middle school. Oh man. <laughs> uh. Fallout 3, I never... I might catch a little hate for this. I don't like any of the Fallout games. I love them. And and for me, it's Fall, it's Fallout 1, the original Fallout, for ha- me. However, Oblivion? Yes. Just yes. Yeah, Oblivion was great. I mean, come on. You have Jean-Luc Picard as the freaking Emperor. It's so great. I know. <laughs> he was like the entire budget for voice acting. <laughs> no, we got he Patrick Stewart. <laughs> he is our hero. <laughs> No other voice acting in that game is good. It's just his. <laughs> no. Yeah. Well, it's because he can literally deliver on any, you know, lines. He he could just deliver. It doesn't matter if he's playing Professor X or he's playing any other role, like singing cowboy. He can go do that. And you just like, I love this. I don't even care. He's like murderizing country music right now. I love this. And this is perfect. Right. I mean, Picard is one of those or Jean-Luc, rather, is one of those actors, or... Patrick Stewart. voice acting... Sir Patrick, yeah, Patrick Stewart. Stewart. Sir Patrick Stewart. Is one of those actors that just deliver no matter what role they play. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I really do like him. I'm, I'm excited that mm-hmm. he's coming back as Jean-Luc Picard here this next year, I think. I think it's 2020, 2021? When we get the show I, back? I'm not sure. They announced it last year in 2018, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be like a 2020 release for like at least the first season. Probably. Um, um. Yeah. Oh, here's one. You're most frustrated you've ever been, and what game was it, and what made you frustrated? Since you brought it up, what was you, what's yours, Giggles? I gotta think about mine. Okay. Uh, mine would. Definitely have to have been. Ooh, uh, the most frustrated I think I ever was was playing the original Halo. And in the first level, you meet the flood. Oh, <laughs> I remember that. Oh because yeah, I, and I am scarred by that level for three reasons. One, I was playing it as a kid. Mm-hmm. Who? I played it with no other lights on. Because I was hiding from my parents, thinking, me thinking, them thinking I was asleep. <laughs> and then basically zombies showed up. <laughs> That's great. And then, and then suddenly, and if anyone knows of the original graphics, that level 
was one of the darkest levels in that game. Mm-hmm. And Especially then to suddenly you... have these creepy spider-like bullshit start coming at you, trying to possess you like fucking demons from hell. <laughs> I turned my, I turned my, I turned my fat millionaire armor-wearing ass around, and I ran the other way for a good minute until I realized no, I had to continue forward to beat the game. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> you tried noping out of that one, and it didn't work. I tried noping the fuck out, and it did not work. So back in my day, <laughs> you had to actually complete shit that was horrifying. Yeah. Uh, I think for me, like, not game mechanic-wise, but, like, just the most frustrated I've ever been with a video game was actually Fallout New Vegas. So Fallout, Fallout 1 is, like, my absolute favorite game of all time. Not just because freaking you got... MacGyver as the voice of Junktown, like the mayor of Junktown and the voice. Like Richard mm-hmm. Dean Anderson, I'm I'm a fan of. And so like having him as like a voice in my in one of my video games, plus it's a video game that's using dark humor. It's using memes from freaking uh Mad Max <laughs> and you're able to, you know, turn-based strategy so you can think and plan out your moves. I mean, like that for me was like one of my top games, but I skip ahead to New Vegas, and mechanically wise, I've had so many mechanical problems with the New Vegas engine on my systems when I was playing it that I ended up actually having so bad of corruption with the game same that I was no longer longer to launch it after about 20 hours in, and I lost all progress. And so I got so frustrated with the game that I stopped playing New Vegas, and I have not played a single one past it except for a little bit of Fallout 3. And I, I mean, Fallout Three came before New Vegas, if I remember right in timeline. Yes. But, but I've, I've played Fallout Three again for a few hours, but I've never picked up New Vegas again, and I've never continued into Four because I want to finish New Vegas before continuing into Four. And it kind of like it's made me so mad with the franchise and like prolonged like my progression in it that I just haven't continued. And I feel, mm-hmm. I feel, I feel anger still when i think about new vegas because of that corruption and like i haven't moved past it yet and like i have this like mental block now about new vegas from like an in-game mechanic perspective uh, i mean i've been so frustrated with different things but i think for me one of the biggest like mechanical problems i have with video games is again if you listen to what i've said i started on a freaking trs 80 i was on a packer bell 286 running dos then 3.1 and then a 486 running windows you know 95 you know i'm i always play on pcs first so console controls normally get me destiny 2 Mm -hmm. on ps4 i'm a huge destiny fan i play destiny 1 religiously on ps4 but playing destiny 2 on ps4 makes me physically angry every time i play it and i get i get mad because i know i could sit down on my pc and I will have a fun time. But as soon as I pick it up on my PlayStation controller, I just start getting like rage face and I start getting angry because I can't move the way I want to or as fast as I want to because I, I, I don't have the DPI on my mouse control. And I'm like, you will just see a completely different side of me. Like I get angry gamer going on if I have to play it on the PlayStation controller. I have not touched my PlayStation since Destiny came out on PC. So for me, it really comes down to functioning controls in the way that I know I can move. Um, for game mechanics, it would be, and this is going to be funny because it's probably something you guys have never heard of, but Dave Brown's Flight Simulator. No. Yeah. Okay, so this, uh, this if you want to go back in time, Dave Brown's Flight Simulator is a flight simulator from like DOS 6 to Windows 3.1, and I think then it got picked up by another company. But anyway, it was an old school RC airplane flight simulator. And I would get frustrated with the controls in it because I was flying this airplane like me and my dad would go fly RC airplanes. That was something I did as a kid. And when you played it in the game on on the the tube and you're starting there and it would start to scan, you could outfly how fast the camera was scanning the horizon. And so I'm like why can't this thing move faster? I would get mad because the head in the game would not follow the airplane fast enough. (laughs) 
So those are kind of my like anger points with video games over the years. How about you, Red? What what's what's some of your frustrating parts with video games? Like what what gets you, what gets your feathers in a rough? What gets your dander so, up? So I didn't know that the Nintendo 64 didn't have integrated saves in some of their games. Uh huh. They did in Super Mario 64, which is great because otherwise I probably would have quit. Because beating that in one sitting when I'm four is way different than now when I could probably do it if I really wanted to. Um, but the Nintendo 64 Spider-Man game uh, did not have integrated yeah. saves. Uh, and I thought that I just had to beat the whole game in one sitting. <laughs> um, so, and I, I apparently, like, was becoming a little speedrunner at that point because... Each time I would sit down, I would only have, like, four hours to play the game. And so each time I would try to figure out how to get through the first, like, six levels as fast as possible because I needed to get farther than I did last time. Mm -hmm. Until eventually I had a whole weekend to sit down. Uh, or a whole, like, Saturday to sit down. And I played the game from start to finish in, like, six hours. Holy as, crap. Like, as, like, a five-year-old. Because I just, kept, I just kept needing to get through, like, time after time. Because I didn't have that many games. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I need to figure out how to get through this because I only have so much time before I have to stop. So I have to beat this game. Before mom comes in and shuts it off. <laughs> exactly. Yep. So, uh, and then we got the rumble pack that had the save feature on it that yeah. you put on the bottom of your controller and I got really pissed. Okay, so do you're an N64 <laughs> guy uh, and you brought up rumble pack. Now, do you remember when Nintendo came out with the expansion card? Yep. Okay, do you know what the expansion card actually did? I have no idea. It did nothing. Sweet. Yeah. It, so this is a great thing. So <laughs> if you remember the expansion card, basically what it did was it added some RAM to the box. But the thing is, is the RAM was actually never needed for any of the games they produced on it because it was designed for when they added the, um, the, the N64 was supposed to have a dock underneath it. And that some dock. Of them under did. No, no, no. This never came out ever, ever. It was never, uh, never a product. So. Yeah. If you went back to old Nintendo Power Magazines, you'd find a Nintendo Power Magazine in the N64 era that shows, like, this HDD upgrade that you'd put underneath. It basically had a LAN port on it, so you're actually becoming internet-capable with your N64. And that memory dock, the expansion card, was meant to give you extra RAM for the LAN component, so that way you could actually uh, download and buffer games from the internet. But since that never came out and was never a product, that expansion card never did anything. So it was a huge marketing term in the U.S. for Nintendo to sell you something you didn't need that everyone bought and put into their N64s. Yeah. And I find it hysterical because everyone bought one because they're like, I had some upgrade. And now, like, when you realize what it's for, like, oh. It didn't actually do anything. Everyone we just went out and spent like back then. We everyone went out and spent like what was that thing like 50, 60 bucks, something like that, and just did nothing for you. And Nintendo sold expensive. these things. Yeah, it was that's great. That's a great marketing right there. Here's something you don't actually need, but we're gonna say it's an expansion, and everyone's gonna buy it. Wait, so here's my question: Was that the first expansion? Expansion any? something with an, the name of expansion in it that didn't do nothing for you um i think from nintendo it definitely was i can't remember if if playstation or any of the other guys had something like that at this point i just uh, i was a late playstation guy i didn't get around until the ps2 so i don't know i yeah uh, we had I a ps1 a the, i had nintendo systems up until gamecube and the wii and then i swapped over the playstation 3 so so uh, so let's let's start with you, Red. Like, if you can list off like your consoles and your PC type stuff that you've played in in your in in your time, let's start with you. Then we'll do giggles, and I'll list mine because I think mine's probably the longest list. Yeah. All right. <laughs> My list is pretty fun. Uh, I'll also give the intent behind some of the systems and crap that I bought. All right. So I started with the Nintendo sixty four as a gift. Uh, I played all of the classics and then sixty four on that. I uh, got a GameCube before we moved, and then once we moved, I got a PS2. Uh, and then I didn't, ne I never had an original Xbox. I got an Xbox 360 around middle school era, and I think my dad got a PS3, and my sister got a Wii. 
So we kind of just like had all the systems, but they belonged to different people. So the Xbox 360 was mine, and I got that because I had saved up my allowance for like half a year because I was sick and tired of all my friends talking about playing online video games. <laughs> uh, so we did that. Then as like high school went on, I'm pretty sure I had a Macintosh. I had a Mac, not a Macintosh, but I had a Mac, like MacBook Pro. Okay. That ran that ran League of Legends, so we played that in high school. And Diablo three came out, and that also played on the laptop, so we did that. Then sometime around this, we started looking at like what PC games actually were, and realized we couldn't play StarCraft on our laptops, so we needed a different PC to play StarCraft. This would be StarCraft two at this point. Yeah, StarCraft two. Um. This is before, this is a original Wings of Liberty. The expansion wasn't out yet. And so we're like, all right, cool. So we started building our PCs and they were all garbage and hand-me-down parts and all that. Um, Mm -hmm. And then slowly started developing those into actual PCs until one of my friends just hard-bought an Alienware. Oh, yeah. Then sometime around the end of high school, because I'm terrible with times and stuff, we got like actual PCs, so we either like bought pre-builts or we just like learned how to build them ourselves and made actual gaming PCs. And that's because we got spoiled by playing League of Legends at like 300 frame rate and before <laughs> and all that fun stuff. Uh, and then the next gen mm-hmm. consoles came out, and we all, my friends and I, all decided, okay, we're, we're either all going to get an Xbox One or we're all going to get a PS4. Because we were all looking at colleges and shit, and we're like, all right, so we all need to get the same thing so we can all play. Uh, and we settled on the Xbox One, and then looking back, we're always like, dude, we should have got a PS4. Well, it's one of those things where it's like, at the time, like, that generation came out, everyone was going back and forth, and I think everyone kind of split on party lines. Like, if you had an Xbox before, you were really an Xbox person at that point. And if yeah. you were a PlayStation, you really went PlayStation at that point technicality we were, ps4 and the original xbox of that same era was ps4 technically had the better tech but it didn't really matter honestly mm-hmm. for the games that were coming out and this is just our negligence at that point like we were xbox people um and we all played cod and so we're like all right well cod on xbox is going to be great and then we didn't know that they had moved all of the support over to sony deals <laughs> Yeah, so Sony paid a lot of money in that era. One second, guys. No worries. I will be right. So, one of the things that I love about that red is that your um, you really went into COD, and then like if I look at you now, like what you're playing, like you can see that formation of like COD multiplayer in the games that you play now. Like you look for really good gun games. Or you're looking for card games, which is like your other background, like your your analog background of gaming. Yeah, my my physical gaming was going, and this has started in middle school. Was a friend brought magic cards to like a camping trip or something, mm-hmm. and like taught us how to play. And then we all went over to his house, and he had like a bunch of extra cards. Mm-hmm. So he was just like, "All right, everybody, make a two color deck," and we're like, "All right, cool." And then we just would do that and. Then that went to me going to like the Friday Night Magic tournaments at your local game store. And then to save you the magic history, I played magic a lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot, a lot. And then, yeah, and then my friends and I were all COD grinders because this was the dawn of YouTube and the dawn of what MLG.TV was. Oh my God. Like, because, yeah, this was the dawn of MLG TV. Like there were there was phase and there was optic and that was it. Um, there was like clan battles I remember doing, and we were all like really 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 good. And everyone got in a clan. Everyone was in some type of clan at this point. Oh yeah, like everybody I was, I was, was in, a, in a clan. I was in multiple Counter Strike clans during this era. So this is like this is bl- blowing my mind. Like I never got into the the COD scene early on. I was I was in Counter Strike like from like ninety nine to two thousand seven yeah. i was i was in i was in counter-strike you know c- plans all over the place and it was great because this is like the modern warfare 2 era so this is the golden age of call of duty and i have i had a 
a few friends who were in like the actual MLG clans who were like farm teams for like FaZe at the time hmm? or like associated with FaZe at the time. And here's me, a little clanless, clanless red running around with a clan tag that's T4 C C C zero, which is just taco. Uh <laughs> Because we didn't know what else to do. And Love it. me and my buds who are just part of this little taco clan are getting like eight nukes a night each before we have to go to bed. And our friends in the MLG clans are like, all right, you should come play with us. You should come play with us. And then we roll in and like dumpster them. And they're like, yo, you want to play? And we're like, nah, dude. Nah, nah, we're, we're, we're fine. We, we, we'll go find some real competition. <laughs> but the see, and like, we didn't know. We didn't know at the time. We, we That was... Everything was so new. We didn't know that like esports was going to be huge. We didn't know that like oh, yeah. we didn't know how to make YouTube videos. Like I had a flip phone. I wasn't going to videotape anything. <laughs> okay, here here's the real question. Was it a Razer flip phone? It was. <laughs> <laughs> the fun thing is like one of my backgrounds is I I did work for T-Mobile selling those things, so and supporting them. So, I uh I remember those days. So, like we didn't know how to make things we didn't know how to record video we just were really good at cod and had flip phones like we didn't know anything <laughs> red was in and the in crowd man he had a razor we're, yeah looking back we're like you know if we had not gone to college and instead just played more call of duty we probably would have been you know mm -hmm. this the next just nade shot <laughs> two you'd be on the uh retirement age at this point we would. We'd be. We'd probably own an esports organization <laughs> called Two Hundred Thieves or something like that. You you would hope to own an esports organization like Two Hundred Thieves. Your name yeah. your name would they hopefully be Drake. Decided not to like me. Yeah, it happens. Giggles. Don't worry about it, man. It's well, okay. It's okay. Using them. Red Red Red's going into details about how he sh he should have been the owner of Two Hundred Thieves. So, uh, what? It's One Hundred Thieves. <laughs> but we're 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 memeing. Uh, but yeah, it's like. At the time, too, it was like, all right, so we're all going to go to college because we're not going to do this whole gaming thing. And we tried and failed to do, like, esports once or twice with, like, StarCraft and stuff. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a very competitive person, and a lot of my friends are very competitive people. You competitive? No. No. Couldn't be. So, therefore, my friends and I were very, very good at the games we played. So, like, all of us were Diamond in StarCraft 2 when we were into StarCraft 2 doing different things. I was a Protoss player. We had a one Zerg player because it was too hard for the rest of us. <laughs> um, and then, like, when we played COD, we would play COD for, like, who could get the most nukes before we have to go to bed. So, uh, Giggles, how about you? Like, where you started with NES when you were a kid, but then, like, through the, through the ages, kind of bring us through, like, your progression of consoles and into PCs and how you got there and what what brought you through all right get mine a second here let me chew this bite <laughs> and this is where we're doing a podcast but yet yeah, i will never edit this later fix it in post fix it in post this is where it's like Roman talked about making things easy for yourself and it's like i don't have dave to edit this fuck it it'll be it'll be in the podcast your dave leave shits it leave shits in he's <laughs> You just bleep okay, so, so in the la last Broman podcast, if you listen to it live, there was actually a big time that they talked about how much time they had left. That's all gone from the podcast because Dave did edit it out. So Dave actually does edit. It's sneaky. Oh, no, he, he is great. sneaky. He's very good. <laughs> he is very good. All right. All right. We'll, we'll stop down the, that side path and let Giggles go, though. Giggles. I'm sorry. I was brought lunch. <laughs> So my uh, we're starting with the uh, NES and whatnot. I moved on from side schoolers to eventually working my way through fighters. Hitting my fighter age is when I got basically I turned I I became like red. I became very competitive. Okay. This is where giggles learn to fight. I see. But I'm chish. <laughs> so then you went from the fighters and what like what platforms did you play those on did you play those all on consoles or did you start to go into pcs or the only one i really got into was um into going 
was uh, definitely Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur was Soul Cal during my teen years. Soul Calibur and Magic the Gathering took up all of my life. Mm -hmm. Wow. So if I wasn't down at the card shop, I was in my I was I I was down at the arcade playing. So uh, not arcade, but our local game shop area. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> back then, back in my day, there was actually little shops set up just for people to go and play games against each other. The fun thing is, out here in the Pacific Northwest, we still have those. <laughs> Which is kind of yeah. interesting. And, and in fact... Which is they, very they... interesting, considering the Eastern Seaboard, back, at, back when I was a kid, was bigger into gaming than the Pacific side. Yeah, well, here in the Pacific Northwest, it's it's it, they're really into the retro scene, and so you actually can go to like a, a a game store like Guardian Games in Portland, and they actually have an area that's like anyone can come into, but then they have a separate area that actually has a bar in it, so you can go sit there. They'll bring you beer, and you're sitting there playing Magic or Pokemon or whatever you want to play or D and D. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. So actually. you've heard it here first. Uh, Giggles will now be saving up to move. <laughs> But no, um, I hit it once I hit Soul Calibur. I think it was around Soul Calibur two, is when I truly hit my competitive stride. Mm -hmm. And I remember just remember begging my parents and saving up countless hours of just menial task labor pay. Oh, we all did which this. Which was this actually, is... which was actually quite a bit of money. Because I lived in a farming community, so I worked as a farmhand in the summer. Oh, nice. So you actually got so income I, from outside just the family work. Oh, yeah. Well, no, it was family work as well, because my grandfather oh. owned a farm. What I'm saying is, like, your immediate family, like, doing chores around your personals, like, your parents' farm, you actually went out to grandparents, cousins, what aunts and uncles, or whatever farms, yeah. and you helped them as well. Yeah, I, yeah, so, I, I grew so up in Montana, so I this I understand this thing. Except I was my so, family all did that, except for me and my dad and my grandparents, because I was the black sheep, and we had technology, and we lived in town, and everybody else lived on farms. So we would go visit during holidays, <laughs> and they all did this, but like we had no idea how to do any of those chores. See, uh, so and so like Drake can vouch for me. I had I I had actual good pay. Yeah. So I only I didn't have to save up half a year. I only had to save up two or three months worth, and then I could go play the competitive scene. Yeah, my cousins would get get some pretty good income based upon helping out at like my aunt and uncle's butcher shop, or going over to you know my cousin's mm -hmm. dairy farm, or going over to the pig farm, or going over to you know my other cousin's place, and like they had the <laughs> horses, and it's like it, depending upon how the family rotated through and who was paying what rate and. They all needed help, so they would all, you know, they would all, you know, pay each other's incomes, and mm -hmm. th that's just how the family would work together. Because no one outside the family really wanted to do it. No one wanted to work for that low of rate if you're outside the family. But it was much better rate than like if you're just doing chores. Like me as a kid, I did exactly. chores. I got paid jack shit compared to the rest of my family. They could yeah. afford cars when they turned sixteen. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. I can't afford. Sh I can't even afford some books. <laughs> see uh, uh going to the tournaments and stuff like that and i i am very proud of the fact that at one point in time i held the top 100 spot for soul caliber but that wasn't until i hit maybe 17 18 i was playing soul caliber three or four mm -hmm. i i'm thinking it was four okay and so it was definitely uh, I, I I did not make very many friends at high school because of Soul Calibur. Yeah, it, it, fighting games in Monopoly will never bring friends together. No, <laughs> I remember one time this uh one one story I always like sharing with it, and I I've shared it countless times while drinking. Is a guy came up to me and started talking a lot of shit. And about how he was better than me and everything else. Mind you, everyone at the table knew I was in the top 100. He didn't. Did, did you put a roll of quarters on the table and say, let's go? 
I took out two rolls and said, if you can beat me within these two ro- if, within these two rolls, I'll give you the money in my wallet. <laughs> so this, so for those of you that don't know about arcades, there's machines that are set up, and you put quarters into, <laughs> and you play at the controls. Mm-hmm. A lot of these are pretty hard to find now, unless you go to the thing called like David Buster's or something like that. But it's not a real yeah. arcade. Yeah, no, it's not. not it, that, that that's entertainment with alcohol, honestly. Yep. But no, this this was maybe when I had turned just turned twenty one. I was downstate, and I for those of you who I live in Michigan, so when I say downstate, Lower Peninsula. Okay. The, the, uh, thing just, like was, glo- the thing that looks like a the thing that looks like a glove. Just words. Not the top, mean not the top pa- part that doesn't actually exist. <laughs> <Hey>. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I was down in um, Lansing area for college, and there was an old fashioned arcade that was still running. Oh, I love those. And they had, uh, I think it was Street Fighter Two. Classic. A Street Fighter, a classic Street Fighter Two box. Oh, some those guy are fun. Said, and some guy ticked me off enough that I put two rolls of quarters down and said, "Come at me." <laughs> Bring it. Uh he did not survive past. He did not. He did not stick around past half a roll. <laughs> it's it's pretty much when you get humiliated and you never get the other components like health bar past half, and you're like, yeah. This is never going to happen. Uh, no, uh, I I started off the fight with a Hadouken. <laughs> Are you a Hadouken spammer? You just get Kano Ryu and spammer, that's all you do? But it's a great no, but it's a great way to start off a fight just to, just to show the other person that hey, I can do combos, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh I moved on to magic after Soul Calibur had died out of interest for me. Mm-hmm. I moved on to playing Magic the Gathering, and that's where that's where my interest has stuck when it comes to card games. Which is great, because with Arena out and with the other one, I can't remember the name of the other Magic game. And Red, you can correct me, because you, you, you've played it. Or let's giggles, you remember what it is. I don't Sorry, remember. I was what being it is. I was being coffee boy. What was the question? Uh so Magic <laughs> Arena's out and then the other Magic game that's available. Oh yeah, so there's MCG Arena, which is the new one, um which is super super polished, very Hearthstone, uh only has the standard format, which is the most recent cards. MTG Online is that's the it. other one that has the absolutely abysmal client <laughs> that has every format and then there's a few like arcadey ones like MTG, yeah, it's whatever ones on the Xbox. It's like a good starter, but but Arena is like the pl- really the place to really thing. play. Like the graphical style yeah. of Arena, like they'll actually play out the cards. Like <clears throat> if you had the contract card, it actually rolls the contract out on the table. Yeah. I love that. That 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 little bit of polish just looks so good. Arena yeah. is likely going to be the new standard for like online card game. Or, I, like, I translating a card game into an online format. Um, it depends on where Magic wants to go with it, because if they put more than just the standard format on it, that's that's a lot of work. Yeah. Because, like, their card yeah. pool right now is probably, like, six, seven hundred cards for standard that, okay. like, actually matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you put Modern up there, your card pool goes to tens of thousands of relevant cards. And if you're... And if, God forbid, they put Legacy on there, what I would, the, the usable card pool would go would shoot upwards past the thousands. If far they past. ever did that, what I'd love to see them do is I'd love to see them allow you if you set up a tournament, you could set up rules around like what decks you could have. And so just having a, a basic check sheet of like, OK, these decks are allowed and you could just like mm-hmm. allow in and allow out for a tournament. That would be they've really s- cool. They've set that precedent. So MTG Arena has a split ladder format. Okay. Where you can either play best of one game, so it's you just queue in, you have one game to beat your opponent, and then you move on. Or you can queue into best of three. And okay. there is now a separate band list for best of one. This is the first time that that's been something like that's happened. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So best of one has, because in, in only one game, certain cards have just a vastly different power level than 
in a best of three matchup where you can dip into your sideboard and get cards that specifically counter other cards. Yeah. Exactly. And I feel I feel like it's gonna set not only is it setting a new precedent for online card games, I feel MTG Arena is setting a new precedent for the card game sport in general. Okay. I and feel like because Pokemon did this a while back, they 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 stopped being actual non online tournaments for Pokemon back in the early two thousands. Objection. Uh oh. Okay. My LGS still has it. On the okay on the eastern seaboard where I live, there has been there hasn't been very many, if any, when it comes to Pokemon tournaments. So let's just, we'll just kind of like preface this with I'm in the Pacific Northwest. Red's in California, which is its own country. And then <laughs> Southern California in particular. <laughs> it's very much its own country. And then Giggles is on the east is on the east side of the country being mainly Michigan, Canada area, East Coast. So so we yep. we're in very we're in very vast different areas of the country, like in North America and how it kind of interacts with society. Can we just take a moment and realize the fact that we're on the we're we're on two different sides of the country and we're having a general conversation? It it's a general conversation that pretty much any child that grew up between like eighty and like two thousand would be having right now. Like nineteen eighty exactly. to two thousand. This is like a common core like thing of our generation is, is video Don't games. Don't you bring Common Core into this? <laughs> we do not talk about Common Core. I use no. the wrong terms. I've triggered the no. teacher. You have triggered the need. Don't worry, my kid's in kindergarten. I have to deal with it Box as math. homework. Box math. <laughs> Box math. <laughs> but it, this is a common like a topic or a common like subject that we all can. <laughs> and by the way, that's Giggles giggling now. Hence the name Giggles. Uh, 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 I hate you all for making me <laughs> score on this podcast. <laughs> Go fuck yourselves. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, recorded forever. But uh, this is just yeah, something that like brings our generation together and brings us together as as a group of gamers and how we grew up and you know be it whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it culture or subculture of society. This is just this is something that we are you know in is like video games have brought people together across vast reaches of space time literally because giggles is is three hours in the future two hours in the future from us and. You know, this is something that's Hello, great. Like with the internet, we can talk tomorrow. about this, <laughs> and we can talk I to people to. in Australia. We can talk to people in you know New Zealand and UK and you know everywhere. And, and when you reach out, have... Pingu. Yeah, I mean the community around like suboptimal. Like if you look at the suboptimal community, it's international. There is not a single is. reflex is single handedly our Malaysian branch. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> Which and is funny because I've I've known I've known Reflex for years, like living yeah. he here in Oregon, and he's he's from Oregon originally, and then he moves to Malaysia. And I'm like, well, have fun. You're in the future now. You tell me what the lot of numbers are. <laughs> and then um, when it comes to, and then I was in France for a week, and I was still having general conversations with these guys. Yeah. That's the great thing about like the community that springs up around gaming, the internet is you understand that it doesn't really matter where you're at or who you are, or where your background is. We all have this common subject to talk about and we're interested in, and we have the ability exactly. to get online, use discord like we are right now and just have a conversation and have, have this like ability to get together. And, and it's, is it's not just like something that, is new this is we've built this over time and we've we've all had these different journeys to get here but we are all here and we're all enjoying these games together or watching streams about people having it and we're in their chats or you know we're able to play them together and it's 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 just a continuation of these long journeys i guess is like where we started like my journey started in about 86 i mean 86 to 88 is like when i got into gaming and we had Dave Brown's Fight Simulator. We had, you know, a bunch of demo discs. Like, I remember there's this Apache Attack Helicopter demo disc. And, uh, and if you did don't remember you, demo did you discs. Did identifying as one? 
No, I did not identify as one. I identified fly <laughs> as one and blowing up the bridge before the train got there because if you blew up the bridge, the train just went off the edge into the gully. It's like, I don't have to worry about shooting the armored train. But anyway, that was how I learned how to play that game. Because you could just go blow up other things. Back in my <laughs> back day, back in my we day, didn't have Discord back calls. Back in my day, yeah, back in my day you didn't Google have Google things, and you had to blow on the cartridge. Oh my god, <laughs> blowing on the cartridge. Okay, so oh my god, blowing. Everybody, blow it, on the cartridge. it, it, it doesn't it matter that it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay, it's electronic connection, right? Blowing air yeah. across an electronic connection is never going to fix it, but. It no. made you feel 100% better blowing on that cartridge, even though all you needed to do was eject it up and then push it back down to make the electronic connection. Because you just didn't make a proper connection the first time. All you had to do is like eject it and push it back down to make the proper connection, but everybody blew on the, the cartridge because it's a feel-good thing. It made okay. you feel good. And I love that because I oh, did it. It was a way to get stressed out. Yeah, exactly. It's a distractor. So think about it as like the same thing as like, I'm in IT, so I tell people to reboot their computers. And then I tell them, like, shut it down and think for, you know, count to 10. That count to 10 is basically what you're doing is you're letting the capacitors on the board cool down so they actually forget their memory. And so that way you can spin the capacitors back up with more electricity. That's all it's doing. It's a time sink. <laughs> I'm going to have you blow on this cartridge so you wait long enough to actually have the capacitors cool down. That's it. Same thing was I tell then, you to count to 10 when you review your computer before you turn it back on. It's just to let the capacitors cool down so you don't turn it on too fast and have the same issue because you didn't actually let the, the RAM inside the, the system lose electricity, and so it actually cleared out. Okay, so you're an IT guy. Red's a teacher. I'm a DJ. Uh, how does your guys – how does our – let's talk about how our professions um, influenced our gaming. That's kind of interesting. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I think that's like, from my perspective, I'm in IT and I've always had computers. So therefore I naturally was drawn to computers. I work on servers and networks today and I build servers. So that's for me, it's like, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm doing the same thing I did back in like 1996 when I built my first PC to game on. So I built my first PC to go play Daggerfall. Like I had friends with, with discs and I wanted to go play Daggerfall. So I built a PC because my parents weren't going to buy me one. And they're like, hey, here's a certification book for A+. Figure out how to build your own computer. My mom's like, here's the software for it. My dad's like, there's a box of parts for my, for my job. Go figure it out. So that's how I, I in my <laughs> world, like, I did that. And then that kind of turned me into, you know, I want to build hardware. And, and brought me forward to the day building PC, PCs and having fun with PCs. Like, my stream PC is a $40 PC I got out of a garage. It's 40 bucks. That's how much I spent on my stream PC. I put a graphics card into it. I put a capture card into it. And that's it. I found an old SSD I had around the house and I put it together. My gaming computer, the oldest part in it is from about 2012. So I have these parts that just I've been around for years and I upgrade just enough to keep it running. Like I, I picked up a 1070 used and put into my gaming PC. So that way my gaming PC would be fast enough to run Anthem. And that's, that's it. I'm stretching the life of this thing. I just put a NVMe drive into it. But because my motherboard is from like 2015, I think. So it doesn't have an NVMe slot. So I bought this adapter for 15 bucks and it's actually in where the, the, uh, where the PCI Express slots. So I'm, I use my background in what I've always done. Just be, because of Baldur's Gate and because of, you know, StarCraft 1 and because of Daggerfall and Arena and all these games that I wanted to play back in the day. And Diablo and Diablo 2. See, uh, for me as a DJ, the first thing that uh, turned me on to becoming even music in general was games like Castlevania, games like, as weird as it sounds, Mario. Games like... Uh, Star Games like the first StarCraft. Yes, I did play PC games, but... Uh, I'm not a PC gamer in general. The first StarCraft had excellent music. Like the Terran levels, I love the Terran levels, and the mu menu music was really good. Exactly. Even Halo, especially Halo. Halo oh. and Castlevania are the two top games that the music inspired me so much. Yeah, the ha Halo franchise music is on point. Going on, 
going on through college, I was in a college orchestra where I played violin for six years. Not six years. Wait, no. Hold on. I'm having a memory flat. I'm having a memory fuck. <laughs> Let's see. I finished college at ten. ten no, I went to college at ten. How many fingers does he have? <laughs> we're waiting, we're waiting for Five it. Five years. Don't forget Five to carry years. the two. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't worry. Plus it's common core. It's it's plus or minus Ass. one anyway. Guys, I'm friends. Guys, these guys are. I'm friends with assholes. Help me. <laughs> 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 no, but I love you both. But uh no. Uh 5 years I played violin. Nice. And so music has music has always been uh, there. But not until I play I played uh Halo 4 did it really state that really jump out at me as something I wanted to do. The in the interest in the music and like the the influence influence where you wanted to go with yourself in career wise. Exactly. Yeah. And then, and now I'm a DJ, DJing for 200 people plus on a given night. That's awesome. That's awesome. Red, can you I don't? Can you track I, back? I, I might not make much, but I love it. <laughs> Red, can you track back? Like you're wanting to teach? Like I, I can, I could probably connect it, but I think, can you do that? Do you have that connection of where in your history of gaming that you could connect? Like you want to become a teacher? Because I can, uh, I can see it in your streams. Like I can see you teaching people in your streams, and like I that's mean, why you do the podcast and stuff too. But I'm a raid dad, mm -hmm. so like I teach mm -hmm. people how to do, you know, Destiny Two raids. Like Comfy and I have always been Sherpas, so like Jeez. in our gaming habits, we're just always like, we are the people where it's like, all right, I need to learn how to do X, Y, or Z, and I need a group to do so. Like we're just those people, and then you educate. And I mean, that's, that's what you do as a teacher. Like you educate them, like you learn it and then you're able to put it into a different way to help other people learn, to bring them up to your same knowledge level. Cause I've seen, I've seen you like explain, um, I've done a couple raids with red and when he does a raid, like everyone has their own way of learning. Like I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a see then do person. So red does the see then do, but then he also does the explanation. Like he will give you a verbal explanation on what to do. Which I which I love because I it helps multiple people do that and that's usually, where a teacher. <coughs> sorry, usually it's comfy explaining, doing some verbal explanation or something, uh, and then it's me getting <laughs> bored of his verbal explanation and starting the raid encounter. This is true when <laughs> you guys are together, but when you were by yourself, you did one without comfy. And you did a ver a verbal, and then you did the the then you did the see then do. Yeah. So usually I'm, what I do is I take the boss's attention and fly around like an ass hat and be like, all right, so you see how he's doing this as I'm like dodging things. So I do have a, I do have a clip of red and I have this somewhere on my Instagram that was during a raid with red. I'm sniping the boss in eater of worlds. And he was eater of worlds. It was the one with the big Vex it's Argos. Yeah. It's Argos. Yeah, Argos. I'm sniping him in his face. And all of a sudden, you just see red flying in. I'm like, and all you hear is, here we go. And he melting points the guy way out in the middle of the map and then sits on top of the guy's head shooting down at them <laughs> as, we, as we kill him because he's melted point. And I'm like, did red just do that? Did he literally just freaking melting point Argos? Yes. By the way, yeah, yes, dude. red did do that. 30% damage increase. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, uh, I was... I also I raid sherpa mainly Destiny one raids, and most of the time I only sherpa Vog. Mm. But that's just because it was Vog. Yeah. It was the very first raid. It is entirely fun, and I love it to bits. V original Vog when you could do the push was so much fun. <laughs> like I just love no, that. No, no, no. Like even more fun is when you could hit melting point. And hit the and hit uh I forget his name but hit um uh, the boss of Wrath of the Machine off the edge with melting point. I don't think I really did or shoulder that. charge. Yeah, I never really did Wrath. The, my 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 D one group was not as involved as my as as when I came in with the communities with D two. 
like my D1 group was just a core set of like six friends that I have in real life that we played D1 together, but we never really like super got into having a dedicated raid. Like we did all the raids, but we only did them like one or two times. We never just sat down and always raided. And that was just because just of everyone had different them. Huh? Just enough to get the emblem or armor. Yeah, it was just enough to get like one or two pieces of something and then we'd move on because everyone had their own time frames and I hated the LFG. Like I never got a good LFG in Destiny 1. And so I just refused to I I used it like three times and then I'm like, yeah, I'm just not doing this anymore. I'm not I'm not bothering with the LFG. Destiny 1 was my heyday, dude. We had a bunch of friends that would do like raids and stuff. And come this is this is um cuz I didn't raid when Vog dropped and I didn't raid when Crota was the current content. I did Crota late. Mm -hmm. Uh after it was already known information that a hunter could blink across the bridge and all that stuff fun stuff. Oh. Boy. So I've actually I've literally only ever done Crota the correct way once. <laughs> Every other time we've done Crota, we've just done some bullshit. <laughs> oh, there's a okay. There's a D two raid that I pretty much I've uh, this uh, was the latest one before whatever the newest one is. It was um. You've, you've never done. You've never done Riven correctly. I've never done Riven correctly. No. This is the funny thing is like I've always done the Riven cheese where everyone just goes to the same room and you all just blast Riven in the face. Yeah. And so I've never I've I never had to do Riven the normal way, which is kind of funny. Like I just. This is the normal for me. See, and this uh -huh. is and this is not a jab at anyone in particular. You know who you are. Um, <laughs> I love doing Riven the correct way. Riven the correct way is hilariously fun, and it's a really epic fight. Most of the people who raid, though, aren't like... They say they know how to do Riven correctly, but they don't. I would love to learn yeah. it at some point, but it's like, there's so many other things going on now. It's like... I have a hard time like going to destiny right now because it's a game that I've been playing for years and I kind of want a, something a little bit new. And so with division coming out and Anthem out and all these other things, it's like, I have all these things that I want to go play. Plus I still have a huge backlog of games, like some of the assassin's creed that I want to play. And, and I still haven't finished near and there's all these games I want to play. It's like trying to find time to play these new games when I have stuff that I still want to accomplish. It's really difficult. Exactly. Um, I mean, just for reference for some of your viewers, I have over thirty. Th I have over thirty or sixty thousand gamer score. I don't even know. So what that is. I've, that's an Xbox thing, huh? Yeah, it's it's, it's how much numbers is what that shit is. Hey, I only moved to Xbox recent this past year. I was on PlayStation before. <laughs> Leave me alone. Yeah. Oh, um, before we move on, uh, one of the things I wanted to say was like, so we, you guys talked about like your history with games and consoles. So mm -hmm. I didn't mention mine. So I started with a TRS 80 and then we had a 286, a 486. And these are all PCs, old Intel box type PCs. And then we had a Pentium one, I think. And that's at the point we finally got an NES. And then NES, Super NES, I think somewhere in the Super range, I got my Sega. And then my my brother put some crayons into it and melted the crayons inside. And so I got a Sega Genesis. And then we got the N64, the PS1, PS2. And about that point is when that was like the end of like getting stuff at my house uh, for a little while and then i got a sega saturn and then a gamecube moving into an xbox original og xbox that's the only xbox i've ever owned was the og one and i still haven't used any online content except for the sega so i don't remember if you guys remember back in the day so back in like 1990 no, actually no you guys wouldn't remember it because the when you were born so about the years you guys were born, born yet so about the years you guys well, were born, the Sega had a thing called the Sega Channel. And so this is a cartridge you could plug in the top of your Sega Genesis into your ca cable TV. And your local cable provider would actually stream Sega games to this cartridge. And so you could play random games that were up on the service. So I think it was like $5 a month. My mom got this cartridge from the cable company. 
and I just plugged it in and I plugged the cable in my room into it and I was able to play all these different games on the Sega Sega channel. So that's like that was such a cool thing like back in the day. I really loved that. I played a bunch of different <laughs> games. Um um and then so from consoles and at about that point this is like about 96 to 98 was when I built my first PC. And that was because of Daggerfall. Daggerfall came out, I think, about 96, 97. And then, of course, StarCraft and Baldur's Gate came out 98-ish. And those are all games that are like, that was like me starting to come back from console back to PC gaming. And then when Diablo launched and all these other PCs, and I kind of, I've been mainly on PC, but over the years, like, I've had PCs. And at the same time, I've like introduced, you know, a PlayStation Three, a Wii, a PlayStation Four, um, and I've had those consoles in the background. And then I would basically I'd buy the console, I'd play the game I want, and then I would sell that console and get a different one. So I I took the PlayStation Three and then I sold that for a Wii. I took the Wii and then I sold that for a PS Four. Well, actually, it's kind of funny. I got the PS Four for free for taking a class or IT. <laughs> I took an IT class and they gave me a PS Four. And I took the, that PS4 and my Wii and I traded it in for a Destiny Edition PS4 because I wanted the Destiny Edition, not a black one. Because I was a huge Destiny fan. But <laughs> over the years, like, computer-wise, I mean, I could go on computers forever, but I've had probably about 40 or 50 different PCs within, like, 1999 to today. And that's just because all my PCs that I get, I don't get new PCs. I can't afford a new PC, so I always get something old, and then I upgrade the shit out of it until basically I can't get performance out of a bottleneck like a CPU anymore or the motherboard anymore. And then I find a a newer old PC, <laughs> and I move all the components over that I can, and then I upgrade that. And so I built my first like real brand new PC like in about 2012, and that was my first real like brand new PC without any used parts in it. And that PC in 2012, I still have components of that in my current gaming PC today. So it just keeps so, me in the, the PC genre. And that's, again, I think why I'm in IT. Mm -hmm. So um, we were talking about uh, Destiny. Yes. How are you guys, uh, how much are you guys excited for next Tuesday? That's my podcast. Get off. Yeah. Yeah, that, <laughs> if you want to know about that, I would recommend you listen to the Red Note cast. But for now, yep, there you go. Amrog <laughs> is already in my waiting room. <laughs> Speaking of, we did go a little long today, so let's go ahead and we wrap did. it up. Giggles, thank you, and Red, thank you. Um, back for, in my day, back in my day, talking about video games and kind of BSing about <laughs> back how, in my day, how on. we got from like. What I love is like we did have a bunch of tangents, but we did cover like how the community has kind of like come together along the way and how like it doesn't matter like your background with video games and where you're at or what you play on it's like we can all get together and we can talk about like how fun this moment was or how fun this has influenced us and all these things that we've done with video games have influenced us heavily and like who we are now as people it's 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 much bigger than like just being a subculture anymore it's it's mainstream culture now yeah. It is. If you, want, if you want a back in my day, think about this. There is an entire generation of gamers who has never had any experience of trying to talk to somebody not without a Discord. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Before before Discord, before TeamSpeak, before Ventrilo, before Mumble, you know, when you really want to go back in the day and you want to talk to somebody, you know, it was actually a pain in the ass. <laughs> It was. It was huge. Modern expensive. Warfare 2, S and D lobby, integrated chats. And... I'm I'm thinking all the way back to like Battlefield 1942. All right, yeah, it's older than me, so. Yeah, Battlefield yeah, 1942. You had text chat, and then eventually Teamspeak came out, and you could do Teamspeak and then Ventrilo. But holy hell, it was hard to try to talk to people. Remember, and then even now, in this day and age we have there's still problem there's not as many problems with the xbox i found as there is with ps4's party chats but they have it they have a functionality there for exactly. you exactly 
Yeah. Exactly. Good good job, Red. Like there, there's people. a great there's a great point. That was a good one. Exactly. Yeah. Trying to talk yeah. to your friends <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> Wait, there's it's friends way on the easier internet. now than it used to be. <laughs> And proven point is how we recorded this podcast. Because we did it all <laughs> yeah, via Discord. Discord. We're sitting in a Discord channel. Yep. Hashtag not an ad for Discord, but Discord's an amazing app. Took three it seconds is. to connect. It was like... Yeah. Hashtag currently sitting on my bed, plugged into my phone. <laughs> and I'm, I'm at my desk. Red's at his desk, I bet. Uh, yes, sir. All right. All right, guys. Um... This has been a great talk, and I do appreciate you guys. I think we should wrap it there. It's been a little long, and so we'll have a long format podcast, I guess. This will be the longest one ever. Hopefully people Woo! got something Woo-hoo! out of it other than us being, you know, curmudgeon old people and talking about old video games and how we've used them. But just remember, people are out there. We're, we're, we're like you. We're gamers. We just want to have fun and play games. It doesn't matter where you're playing or what you played on or your history with games. We all had something there to talk about. So... Just remember, yeah. back in my day. Back in back in my day. Get off my lawn. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, Giggles, is there any place you want to promote or anything before you get off? Uh, no. The unless you're unless you're in the east unless you're in the east side um uh, on the east coast. The only thing I would promote is do act do Discord. If you have anything to talk about, because holy crap, the audio in this th- of these things is amazing. Yeah. How about you, and Red? A, oh, go ahead. And that's and that's coming from a DJ who specializes in hearing stuff. <laughs> shit, he meant shit, but anyway. I was trying to be good. <laughs> it happens. And Red, I know Red's got the Red No Cast, but let's let's let him pimp himself real quick. Hey, Red. Yo, what up? It's your boy, Red Nolas. Don't forget to punt that subscribe button, smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a thumbs up, rate and comment below, or whatever rate, they say. Is. Rate, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> Don't Join my grandma's Patreon. Uh, I'm at mixer.com slash Red Nolas, and offline at suboptimal.co which is where this podcast and all the others go hell yeah and that's what's with the, the if you're looking at youtube that's what this little thing over here in the corner is it's the suboptimal logo you can see us at suboptimal.co and i hope you guys have fun and i'll talk to you next time with probably some other topic but who knows we'll probably be talking more about video games probably streaming Play later